Hi everybody, Rachel here from Give Butter. I have Nolan joining me here from BBYO. How are you doing today? I'm great, how are you? Doing good. Um, to start, would you mind telling us a little bit about who you are, what you do with BBYO, um, and, what, and for those that aren't familiar, maybe what BBYO does? Sure, so I am Nolan, like you said, and I work for BBYO, typically based out of Washington, D.C., um, in our international office, our headquarters, which helps to coordinate our programs that touch about 80,000 Jewish teens worldwide in 50 plus countries throughout the year. And we do that in leadership development programs, Jewish enrichment experiences, uh, sports, and really anything and everything you can think of that teenagers will be doing is, is where we are. And we're on a local level, in a more regional level, and an international level. Uh, really putting on events and experiences for teens to help them uh, grow into positive, enriching, mature adults uh, as they age and, and filling a really important gap in the life cycle of Jewish teens, providing them this safe space to grow up, to explore their identities, to make friends, to build connections uh, all around the world. I love it. Um, so I heard that you recently rallied the largest Jewish teen giving experience in the world recently, um, raising funds with other nonprofits for various nonprofits with the Jewish teen philanthropy. Um, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so this was part of our JSERV initiative, which um, has taken place for the last 16 years. And JSERV is a collaborative effort from a bunch of different Jewish organizations uh, that have come together and some non not Jewish nonprofit organizations. Uh, it's a project of Good Deeds Day, which is a multinational organization that brings together community service efforts of Youth Service America, of a, a whole bunch of organizations that basically believe that teens uh, have the power to really impact the world in a positive way. And we've been doing JSER for 16 years. In the 15 years prior, it's been a an in-person local experience. And so teens gather in their local city, their local community, and they either do direct service projects or they do philanthropy projects or advocacy projects or something that brings together all of that uh, to really do, you know, stand up for communities that need it and to lend a hand, usually one day a year, but as a celebration of year round efforts. So not just for that day, but really to say, hey, we're the Jewish teens of insert city around the world here. And we are excited about, you know, helping to improve the world. And this year, as we looked at what to do in, in about, with only a few weeks notice and realized, hey, all of those in-person events are not going to be able to happen. Uh, everything is moving virtual and, and we want to adapt. Our teens especially are nimble and they want to adapt to where the world is right now. And we threw together basically a full day lineup of experiences uh, that was on our BBYO On Demand platform, which is our new virtual space for Jewish teens worldwide during this time of uncertainty. And threw together this day of philanthropy, philanthropy, advocacy, and service projects. Um, and part of that was a worldwide philanthropy campaign, which we did with the Jewish Teen Funders Network. And that basically brought together the teens to do a giving circle model, uh, where they were raising collective money that then they themselves on our live event of primetime celebration would decide where that money goes across four organizations that they chose themselves that are impacting the world. Uh, right now with the current coronavirus issues. And so it was, a, it was a really wonderful, really successful day. And we saw teens from dozens of countries uh, jump into learning sessions, to advocacy workshops, to philanthropy experiences. And then we had a live concert with uh, the artist Matoma at, uh, during the afternoon. It's like an energizing rally. And then, like I said, we wrapped it all up with our primetime special where the teens participate in this giving circle. And and decided how to allocate those funds according to the organizations and, and the communal pool that they raised. I mean, amazing, incredible. Thank you. How quickly you were able to pull that together, how dynamic you had turned around your entire day of giving. And like you said, you ended the day with a live stream and you used Give Butter to do that, um, to host and display your live stream after, right? Yeah, so we, you know, a good friend of Give Butter and we wanted to make sure that like I said, we're working with teens and they, they demand the latest, the coolest, the best in everything. And, and when we're looking, you know, very quickly at where are we going to collect these funds? How are we going to 
use our network that's already organized in regions, in teams, in chapters, and, and allow them to fundraise on their own, but in this really decentralized, but also all rolling up to one major campaign. And, and there was only one way that we could think of to do that, which truly was give butter um, right away, which is like not even sales pitchy at all. Like really, I don't know another um, site that can do it. And, and give butter, the team was just so amazing at getting it up and ready so quickly to be ready for the experience for the virtual event to make the live streaming work uh, and to really integrate it all so that we can have that team functionality so that we could have our teams with social sharing so that we could really make it a successful day uh, with such short notice and, and it was a, it was really an excellent solution to use. Well thanks for saying that it sounds like you you wanted to turn to give butters live stream feature because it was engaging for the teams. Um, and, and they almost like demanded that of you, which I love how you said that. Um, if you don't mind, I'd love to share my screen um, so that folks who are listening, watching, reading can get a look because your page is just a 101 in what to do on a live stream page. Um, so everybody who's looking, they have a leaderboard, everybody that's involved, a really compelling story. Really yeah, and I think just one, one of the things in looking at this that really, it made me so thrilled throughout the day is these comments on the right side and, and seeing, you know, knowing some of our teens personally and seeing them rally their communities and, and watching it come in in real time was super special. So, you know, seeing their parents or their grandparents give and, and write a nice little comment of, you know, great job, Caleb, good luck raising money for this important cause is, it, it just, it warmed my heart throughout the day to see it. And that, like being able to interact with each other in that way was really special. Yeah, you know, knowing that we couldn't be in person and we couldn't connect or have a, a phone bank or do something like all together, but as best as we can, creating that feeling of being together online is, is I think part of what made it so special. Right, yeah, that live supporter feed, it looks like people were really engaged with yours which is really touching to see. Um, and everybody who's looking, you can see that the live stream is just front and center. So it, it makes it really compelling for people to hop right on immediately. Um, and people, um, including me, I've watched it after it went live. You can still watch afterward um, and even make donations now if you want to. Um, so I would love to share just a minute intro of your live stream for folks that haven't had the chance to try a live stream or see one yet on um, Give Butter or at all in the fundraising world um, because I thought you just did such a phenomenal job of bringing people in to the story, so. Yeah, thank you, let's do it. It used to be at the forefront of our minds and calendars all year round, especially now in the weeks and months ahead. Jewish teens have long answered the call of community responsibility. At every juncture of every generation, Humanity and the Jewish people have been met with moments that required the energy, leadership, and enthusiasm of youth, and we have always risen to that occasion. Moments like JSERV and Good Deeds Day and Community Mitzvah Days and other events like these are great, but all of these efforts are about creating a habit and sustaining a priority focus on helping one's neighbor and making the world a better place for all people. Obviously, our plans have shifted from what we originally meant to do, and what we thought we would be doing just a few weeks ago is probably not what we did today. But nevertheless, we came together to do the work that so desperately needed to be done, and we had a lot of fun doing it. Teens across so many movements and networks, BYO, USY, NIFTY, Maccabi, Active Jewish Teens, Zevesta, JCCs, and so many more blended to become one global force of good. Today we saw communities near and far, large and small, holding stellar virtual service events. In Cleveland, teams work with the highest to stand up for immigration rights and support refugees. In Orlando, teams rallied in support of a brighter future in the face of climate change. In Southern California, teams spoke with their elected representatives to advocate on important issues. Teens in London wrote messages of support uh, to medical professionals on the front lines of the coronavirus outbreak. In Montreal, 
teen-supported cancer patients, many of whom can't be visited right now, with e-cards. In Westchester, teens held a virtual bar mitzvah supporting a local animal shelter for awareness and philanthropy. In Switzerland, teens shopped for and delivered groceries to the elderly as they can't leave home. And the list goes on and on. We'll celebrate everyone's projects on the JSIP International website and track each community's individual impact to completion. Plus, for the first time ever, we launched a JSERP International team. So good. I love when um, there's somebody in the corner when they mention Cleveland, they're like, yeah. <laughs> I think that that's, that's like really, and watching it again, it's been one of the highlights with these virtual experiences is just like seeing all of the people, you know, and mm -hmm. one thing that we've really leaned into is doing, um, you know, a meeting format where you can see everyone and not always just a webinar where you're only seeing the speakers and, and it's for that moment, right, of like the, yeah, Cleveland, like that's the, that's the connection that I think people are striving for and that this allows you to have really. Um, and it's, it's something special. It's like they said, it's not something that we plan for, uh, but it's something that we pulled together. And, and I think it's a testament to our network and our teens really, and, and what they, what they want and uh, what they're pushing for, no matter what the situation. Mm -hmm. So Nolan, tell me what are some of your other lessons learned going live stream for this event? Yeah, I think that one thing that we saw um, with the donations, and you mentioned that you can still donate now, and one of the things that we saw was a lot of donations after the live stream, uh, which was obviously just an added bonus and an extra special. And I think um, a learning really, we maybe even could have capitalized on that more. Like maybe our stream could have felt a little more like a phone-a-thon where we were, you know, saying, hey, if you haven't yet donated, be sure to check out and donate. And and obviously, if watching on the Give Butter platform, it's right there. Like, you can't miss it. And so I think that that's one of the things that we, we learned was definitely using the live stream and the fundraising campaign to play off of each other. Um, and so while we plan this as a culmination of the day, it, it was also a launch to some of the exciting things that happened after. And so being intentional about that was, uh, you know, something that we could have done. Um, and I think the other was just really making sure that like everyone felt uh, seen and heard like in a with such a diverse team net like team network around the world. Uh, you saw some of those experiences that were listed there, but all the different places that they're calling out, you know, that that's on purpose because we want people to feel like they're a part of our movement and um, not separate from anything at all, no matter what country you're on or no matter what project you did for the day. Um, and so just creating that community feeling every step of the way, I think is really, really important. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, I agree with that. Are there any tips and tricks that you recommend for folks who maybe are totally new to live stream too, or it's, they're about to head into their first live stream experience, maybe for something like Giving Tuesday next week on Give Butter? What are some yeah. tips and tricks you might have for them? I I think that this like the the best basics is is really keeping it simple um, and recognizing that in the same way that your in person gala or your in person event or whatever it might be, you, you want it to feel special and it doesn't have to be overcomplicated. You know, just having people share their personal stories, just having the faces and the teens and the stories behind it for us is what made it really meaningful. And I think. It doesn't need, you know, fireworks, so to say, to make people believe in your mission. I think mission drives. And if you really show that, and, and even if you're doing something that's just a few people on a live stream and you're hosting and having them share how your organization has impacted them or how your organization has maybe adapted to the current times or something like that. And, and people, they want connection. They want stories. They want to really be able to see and hear and, and understand that they're still, they can find themselves in these places and they can, you know, things might change. It might feel like everything is like totally different than it was a few weeks ago. But if your organization is there, you're standing strong, you're continuing steadfast with your mission. I think sharing that in a really clear, simple way is, is important with them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's what we did with this. That's what it showed. I think is that we're not going to back down. We're not going to stop. Things might change, but uh, we are who we are and, and, and we're going to stick to our mission really at our core. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what I hear you saying is keep it simple, stay mission-driven, and share engaging stories so people feel connected to your community. Yeah, I, and I think the only thing I'd add, which I, I think everyone knows, but um, which we saw definitely in the philanthropy campaign at this time, is just 
be really compassionate and sympathetic to everyone's experiences at this time. You know, so many people are struggling with, with health issues, with economic issues, with all kinds of things. And, and as many of our organizations, you know, are doing giving Tuesday campaigns or fundraising campaigns, because that is more important now than ever. Um, you know, our donors lives have changed too. And so adapting and, and being sympathetic to that, I think as a, as like a blanket on top of it all, is just something really important to keep in mind. Um, I don't think it means don't ask. I think it just means, uh, you know, be careful about your ask and, and ask in the right compassionate way. Yeah, be sensitive. I agree with that. And I think you, you did a great job of modeling that for all of us. Um, it, it seemed like your script was just so thoughtful. Um, can you just share with everybody who's listening, how did you do that? <laughs> just writing it and getting it to all these different people and practically did you do a trial run because it seemed to run so smoothly. Yeah, it's a lot of Google Docs um, <laughs> and a lot of WhatsApps. And um, we did, we had, you know, people hop on a little bit before the speakers to do a trial, which is really helpful. And and I think reminding them, you know, that it is like an, an in-person event and keeping it tight and keeping it clean. And, and even thinking about that for ourselves and writing and scripting it is important, you know, the same standards that we'd have for a 5,000 person international convention, this has the potential to reach so many more people than that, you know, through Facebook and Zoom and give and all these different platforms. It's, it's really, you have to remember that I think while keeping it simple and while not getting overwhelmed, um, these events, these virtual events have the opportunity to reach so many. So, uh, you know, treat it like you would with your, your biggest event and be really intentional about it and definitely practice, definitely uh, for us, I think the, the core part too is, is have the teens feel passionate about it and be involved. So, you know, we're not writing it for them and giving them a script and saying, great, read this and, and go right ahead. Hopefully it feels comfortable. It's a collaborative effort with our speakers and with our teens to say, what, do, what, do you, what do you, message do you want to share with everyone? And how can we write that together so that it reaches the audience? Um, and, and really just, yeah, focusing in on it like it is the like it has the weight that I think it does. Um, and just because it's virtual doesn't mean that it's, it's not important. Right. That collaborative effort really did come across. Um, so I guess just in closing, if there are some people who are listening that are maybe on the fence about live streaming, a little bit nervous about trying it, what would be your encouragement or advice to them? I think that everything that we've been doing is a, uh, like, it's like, you know, dipping your feet into the water to see if how hot it is or how cold it is. And, and you don't know, like we have no idea what's going to stick, but what really, what do you have to lose? You know, as long as, as you're doing it well and you're trying, I think that shows your community and your supporters and your network that, that you're adapting and that you're trying. So I think my best advice would be really try it, like dive in, try one thing, try another thing the next week. If it didn't work, alter, take feedback. Um, you know, that's what I think the last, bunch of weeks have really shown us at BBYO is that everything's a trial and everything's worth a try. Um, and really it, it's, it's just a time to really innovate and be creative because everyone's at home. They're on their computers, they're sitting around, they're waiting for something to happen. And if you can provide a compelling experience, go for it. You know, why wait until things are back in person? Uh, and, and who knows where it'll go once things are back in person, right? Like maybe virtual events are a nice compliment to in-person events and, and it's a new thing that the world has cracked we have no idea so go for it try it out uh, really I think you have nothing to lose thanks for that I mean and it's it's organizations like BBYO that inspire give butter to be adaptable and do something new for us too I mean live stream was created in less than two weeks as a response to help folks like you do the incredible work that you do so Kudos to you and the entire BBYO team, uh, JSER, for inspiring us, challenging us, pushing us forward. Um, incredible work. Nolan, thank you so much for doing that. Thank you. Yeah, and thanks to the Get Better team, really. I mean, it, it was a perfect union. It was like, hey, we want a live stream event. And Get Better said, hey, we're almost done developing our live stream technology. And we just, we married the two. Um, and it was beautiful. So thank you and your team. Thank you. Take care. Thanks.